guys, Brian with Cajun Cardboard coming at you from the great state of Louisiana. And this is a mail day that I have been waiting for for a very long time. This is uh, a blood red mail day that is either going to be extremely boring for you or extremely fascinating depending on your perspective of PMG Reds, the 1997 Metal Universe Precious Metal Gem Reds. Um, I've talked about them a lot. You guys know I was chasing the set. You guys also may have heard because I've blurted it out a hundred times that I've decided to move my partial set to uh, one particular buyer in bulk. We're working through those negotiations right now. It's going very well. It's a win-win for both parties involved. I've decided to move the money from my PMG Red set into another avenue of the hobby, which I can't talk in too much detail about right now because it's an ongoing process with a particular seller, but I will get into detail about that at some point in the future. I promise you, I just can't do it at the moment. Sorry to leave that hanging. Sorry to give you a teaser like that, but uh, the mail day you're about to see today is probably unprecedented. It's going to be a little bit over, uh, well, it's certainly over 100,000. I would say it's, I don't know, it's well into the six figures. We'll leave it at that. I'll let you guys figure out the comps. Um, and the funny thing is, Almost every single card you're going to see today has already been sold to a buyer uh, in one lump sum. So uh, I wanted to get this mail day done so I can then jump back in my PWCC vault and transfer all these cards over to the buyer since he has already paid me for these cards. Wouldn't it be nice if I could actually give him what he paid for? So uh, enjoy this. This is going to be one of the biggest mail days uh, it's actually, ironically, not the biggest mail day I've had in the last three weeks, but it's a pretty damn big mail day with a lot of value and a lot of cards that are really cool. Uh, so here we go. Uh, there's 45 of them, so buckle up. I'm going to go crazy quick. Bryant Reeves, these are all raw cards that I sent to PSA. Six of these were graded. I cracked them and I resubbed them to PSA to either get them out of a BGS Authentic slab, to get them out of an SGC slab, uh, or to get them out of a very low-grade BGS slab. So I'll tell you those when we get to those. But most of these were raw PMGs that I bought from all over the world, from all sorts of different sources, and I had been holding them in my vault, and I finally sent them over to PSA, and uh, the people at PWCC were absolutely fantastic. I sent it from vault to PSA, back to vault, so they were great. Uh, my rep that uh, I communicated with at PSA babysat me through this whole process because I was worried about so much money flying through the air, as I'm sure some of you guys are when you do this, but uh, everything worked out smoothly. They were out of my vault, back into my vault, literally in two weeks uh, and then I just waited about three or four days for these things to uh, to upload uh, as far as images so I could share them with you so here we go pop one of one four graded higher authentic altered Bryant Reeves <clears throat> let me do this let me make this a little bit there we go let me go here right there is that good can y'all still see that good okay 90 uh, same thing PMG uh, authentic Anthony Mason boy was he a pain in the butt back in the day so uh, graded authentic Kendall Gill, six, pop one of three, none graded higher. That just gives you an idea how difficult it is to get PSA sevens and above. So pop three, none higher. Kendall Gill, really good two-way player uh, back in the day. Had some really good years with the Hornets. Uh, another one, pop one of three, just two graded higher. This is uh, Lindsey Hunter. Arvita Sabonis, our first Hall of Famer. Uh, PSA six, this is one of the bigger cards. Um, in the uh, in the submission that I sent over there again y'all take a, a particular close look at these weird backgrounds I mean he's got two weird cameras focusing on him I'll try not to get too uh, too crazy with you guys here's one that was really tough to pick up I picked this up from a fantastic New York Knicks collector I, I really can't I even reached out to him to tell him I apologize that I moved his card so quick I certainly had no intention uh, we did negotiate. I did pay a nice little premium for this Allen Houston card. It was raw when I bought it. Uh, I was very happy that it came back a PSA 5. Uh, I was expecting maybe a 4 or a 5. So really, really, really good player. It's only a pop 2 with only 2 graded higher. So again, you're seeing just how low and how rare these PMG reds are. Uh, here's another one, the Malik Rose. I actually sent three Malik Roses, I believe, or maybe two. Uh, this one came back a PSA 7. That's a pop two, none higher. So you're looking at the best PSA Malik Rose in the world right there. Uh, Matt Maloney comes back PSA 5, pop three, three higher. 
Derek Coleman, another what I call a semi-star, right? A semi-star, semi-star, whatever you want to call it. So not a super alpha star where it's going to be a, a five-figure card. It's not a $10,000 card, but it's also not a common. So this is one of those cards like Derek Coleman and uh, Marbury and, you know, Jeff Hornacek. Some of these guys in PMGs, you would think... Um, that you, you may not realize they're like five, six, seven, eight thousand dollars sometimes just because they're so rare. This Derek Coleman came back a six, it's a pop three with only three graded higher. Uh, next, we got a Gugliata, another example of a semi star. Some of you guys may have forgotten this dude could play, he could really put up numbers. Very, very good offensive player. We could probably pull it up right here and see. Uh, yeah, that year in Minnesota, he averaged over 20 points a game and uh, you know, didn't shoot the ball super well, but. If you can score 20 in the league, you are somebody, and you should not be forgotten as easily as uh, Googs has been forgotten. Googs was his nickname. So that's a pop 101. There's five higher graded, obviously. This one's graded authentic altered. Again, super squeaky clean looking card. I, I don't know if the card really was altered or not. You never know. It's just a tough job PSA's got. Maybe sometimes they think the card looks too good not to be altered. I don't know. Um, but a PSA 2 here for John Wallace, uh, first round draft pick by the New York Knicks. Four graded higher. Next, we got Detlef Schrempf, another semi-star, really good player, really good offensive player for the old Sonics teams. Make this a little smaller so they fit. There we go. Uh, next, we got a PSA 5, Cedric Sabalos, um, probably most famous for his blindfold dunk in the dunk contest, not necessarily his ability to play basketball, but he was a good role player, kind of that uh, glue guy. He was a pop. Uh, this card in PSA 5 is a pop 1 with 1 graded higher. Next, we got a pop two, none graded higher. So another Malik Rose. So there's two Malik Rose PSA 7s out there. I have both of them. I've sold one uh, and I've still got one for sale if anybody's looking to build their PMG uh, red set. Nat, if you're looking to upgrade your PSA uh, Malik Rose, which you probably, I assume, have, uh, I've got a PSA 7 for you, Nat Turner. Uh, I'm sure you watch every one of my videos, right? Uh, Steve Smith, another semi-star, and he's a borderline star star, right? So he made some all-star teams. He was It's tough to make an all-star team in the East when you got Jordan and Pippen and guys like that at your uh, backcourt positions, but he's a pop two as a PSA four, and that's an amazing looking pop four. I'll be honest with you, this was a screw job here. Uh, Nat should come and pay 100000 for my Malik Rose for the screw job I got on this. This is a really good, clean looking. The bottom edge has some issues, but it's not a four. I mean, gosh, some of the fives and sixes that I got back didn't look as good as this four, Steve Smith. Uh, but uh, pop two, two graded higher, pretty big time Steve Smith card right there. Uh, Isaiah Ryder, most famous for his East Bay dunk in the dunk contest as well. Great UNLV player in college. Um, Isaiah J.R. Ryder, PSA 6, pop 3, 3 graded higher. Austin Crozier made a hell of a lot of money from one humongous playoff series where he just went bananas in one playoffs and uh, everybody in the world wanted to play him. He was the kind of the first pick and pop and uh, versatile 6'10", 6'11", you know, uh, shooter big man, kind of that, that pick and pop flex four position. He kind of helped that transition in the NBA where they realized, hey, we may not need a 7 foot, 260 pound guy. We might be able to make things happen with, you know, a 6'10 white dude there, or a black dude, but this was a 6'10 white dude who could just pop out and uh, pop on every screen and roll and shoot threes and pull the other team's big giant anchor out of the paint. So this is a pop two, none graded higher. Again, when you get a PSA 7, it means something. Terrell Brandon, PSA 6, another really, really good player from the Timberwolves. Pop three here, Antonio McDice, PSA 6. You talk about a player, it's just... He was a fantastic offensive player, electrifying in the air, could just jump out of the gym, uh, put up some really good numbers in uh, in Denver, and uh, that's a PSA 6, pop 3, none higher, so 6 is the highest you're getting in PSA. Kerry Kittles, I had a nice duel with, uh, uh, well, I shouldn't say I had a duel, uh, our team dueled with uh, Kerry Kittles' team for Louisiana Supremacy. We never got to play that fateful game. Kerry Kittle's team went on to win the state championship in 1992 here in Louisiana. He played for the St. Augustine Purple Knights, which is a pretty famous uh, high school basketball program down here in South Louisiana in New Orleans. Uh, but this one comes back authentic. This is actually a card that I did crack. It was BSA, B, uh, BGS Blue Label Authentic. And I sent it to PSA hoping for exactly what I got, which is PSA Slabbed Authentic. So that's a pop three. There are two numerically graded cards. 
uh, but there's more authentic graded carry Kittles than there are numerically graded carry Kittles. So let that one sink in. But Kittles is a pretty good player in the NBA, and he was from that great 1996 draft class that featured Nash and I Iverson and Ray Allen and Kobe and, and those guys. Uh, precious, uh, precious metal gems are unique indeed. There is a sphinx in the background of this one, so uh, that is clearly the result of acid or LSD or some type of uh, narcotics that the designers were ingesting at the time. There is a metallic sphinx in the background for Vashawn Leonard. That's a PSA 6. That is also the highest there is. Pop 3, none higher. Another Steve Smith. This one comes back authentic. Pop 1 of 1, 4 graded higher. You saw my PSA 4, Steve. Uh, another, uh, we got Bobby Phils here. I'm not sure what that is in the background, but that's Bobby Phils. Maybe it's a Connect 4 board. That kind of seems like something that people who drop acid would be uh, thinking about when they're designing basketball cards in the late 90s. But that's a Pop 2, just one graded higher. Bobby Phils, another authentic altered here. This is a Kerry Kittles again. Uh, I like it because on a lot of these pictures, you know, they've got the ball where the ball would be. There's no ball, but it's kind of like a red shadow, and that's another example of that. So Kerry Kittles again. Uh, we've got another Malik Rose. This one's authentic, so I went 7-7 seven, seven authentic on Malik. I'm fine with that. Um, like I said, one of them's already been sold. So here's the first big one, and this is a fascinating story. I bought this John Stockton in an SGC 5.5. And I sent it to PSA, and it actually upticked to a PSA 6. Um, this card's obviously uh, already been sold to my buyer. Uh, sad to see it go. I liked having uh, the Stockton, the Malone, and the Hornacek, and the Brian Russell. So I thought that was really cool having those four, you know, jazz legends. I shouldn't say legends, but... Uh, yeah, well, legends, yeah. So Adam, the real guy, 27, will love uh, will love to see these Jazz PMGs. But uh, that's a pop five, also none graded higher. So six is as good as it gets for the Stockton as well. But it's been sold. Uh, Sean Elliott, shout out to Emil on uh, the Slab Talk. Uh, this is a PSA five, pop four, just two graded higher. Another one of those semi stars. Sean Elliott, incredible career at Arizona. Another semi star, arguably star again from that 1996. Uh, beautiful 1996 uh, rookie class full of depth and full of talent and potential and just some monster players. Sharif was an absolute animal from day one. I think injuries kind of cut his career a little bit short, uh, but he's a pop five and uh, only one graded higher. Big time card there, not your, not your average common. Ron Mercer, one of my favorite players from one of my favorite teams uh, in college basketball history, the, those uh, late 90s Wildcat teams under Rick Pitino. This is a pop one with three graded higher. It's authentic altered and uh, it's super squeaky clean. So if it wasn't altered, it'd probably be a six or seven. Sherman Douglas, the little general, uh, again, Syracuse legend, PSA uh, authentic, pop two, four numerically graded. Sherman Douglas out there. He, uh, he was a journeyman in the NBA, he spent his time on a lot of different teams. Tyrone Hill, authentic right here. Um, he's got that shadow basketball right there that we keep talking about. I'm not sure what he's doing over here with his offhand. One of the ugliest players to ever play basketball. Um, I don't say that very often, but him, Sam Cassell, um, you know, Bo Outlaw, Tyrone Hill, they, they check all the boxes for ugly basketball players. This is a pop four, three graded higher. <clears throat> There it is. There's the big one, the Carl Malone. So this was an SGC, I think it was an SGC 6.5. So I cracked it because I wanted everything. At the time that I sent these, I was collecting the set. I wanted the whole set in PSA. And then a buyer came along while these cards were actually being graded by PSA and made my decision very easy to move the set. He's buying them at very fair prices, and I, I, I have another play that I'm making as we discussed. So this, uh, this car Malone uh, went from an SGC 6.5, cracked into a PSA 6, for those of you curious. Pop 3, only 2 graded higher. We've got uh, Vitaly Potapenko, or Potapenko, depending on how you want to pronounce it. I think it's Potapenko. He is uh, trying to shoot a little right-hand half hook over a murderer, uh, Jason Williams. Not white chocolate, uh, not the point guard with the from Duke with the motorcycle crash, but the guy that killed his chauffeur, or butler, or whatever he was, um, it, accidentally, allegedly. Um, anyway, that's Potapenko. Nice story behind that card. Here's a guy that's just crazy underrated in the hobby. Mark Price was... Freaking fantastic. He was a great player. He was a really good player to have on video games because he never missed free throws, as you can see, 90% plus. He shot 40% from three, and he shot a lot of threes, which is why his field goal percentage was 447. Couldn't really get to the rim. He was six foot 180, which is 
small by human standards, let alone NBA standards, but uh, he looked more like he was going to do your taxes than he was going to put up 20 and 10 on you. But boy, let me tell you, he could do it. And oh my gosh, I just noticed there's the same Sphinx in the background. So what did we see the other one on? I think it was not Sherman Douglas. It was somebody else, but more than one Sphinx background PMG. So if you want to collect the Sphinx cards, uh, there's at least two of them out there. Pop one, two graded higher, Mark Price. Uh, pictured in that Warriors uniform, but his best years were on those Cavs teams uh, where he'd go, go to battle with Jordan. Uh, Mark Jackson, uh, top five in assists in the history of the NBA, for those of you who don't know. Um, this card looks like it's got horrible paper loss, but that's really the way the card's designed. Those are actually leaves blowing across the front of Mark Jackson, kind of hiding him. And if you really zoom in, you can see it's kind of got this little, uh, it's like, fire action almost like a, a red you know it's bleeding off the ball like the balls showing you know some indication of movement that the ball is moving forward or something like that but uh, again these pmg reds man each one of them's got something real weird and crazy going on but doesn't it look like like the paper ripped off and that's what you see is the red background uh that's a pop two only three graded higher uh, we've got another, here's here's the Hornacek. So the Hornacek I got back, authentic, altered. Oh, well, there's six numerically graded. This one's authentic, altered. Todd Fuller, PSA six, uh, three graded higher, one of four. Jermaine O'Neal, another semi-star, another guy. I think he was also, wasn't he, from that 1996 draft class? Gosh, that draft class is amazing. So all of these are second-year cards for all these guys that we keep mentioning. You know, the, the Sharif Abdul-Rahims and the, and the Jermaine O'Neal and those guys that were 96 rookies. So this is the second-year card for those guys. PSA Pop 3, only one higher-graded card. We've got Chris Childs, PSA 6, Pop 3, none graded higher. <clears throat> We've got Danny Ferry, college legend. Um... You know, he was the Leitner before Leitner. Authentic, pop one, just one graded higher. And again, Leitner was a significantly, significantly, significantly better college player and NBA player for that matter. Uh, but that's Danny Ferry, pop one, just one graded higher. Uh, Derek Coleman again, this is a PSA 7. Uh, that's a big time card for Derek. It's got an airplane propeller, thank goodness. I know for a fact, I think Shaq has an airplane propeller in his card as well. Uh, or maybe I'm confusing him with somebody else, but I think that, that that airplane propeller is in the Shaq card as well. But there's Derek Coleman with a really cool pose, dunking the ball two hands, PSA 7, pop one, one higher. Uh, and then a big boy, right? So we're talking about the T-Mac rookie card. Uh, you know, if you go down the list of the best rookie cards for Tracy McGrady, um, I, I don't know much about them, but I know you got the essential credentials. I know you got the PMG green, obviously, which would be a massive card. Uh, and then you got the P uh, PSA, uh, I've got a PSA 6 PMG red here, and I've actually got two uh, Tracy McGrady PMG reds. Uh, one of them I plan to move along to my buyer, and the other one I'll probably keep in my collection for a little bit because I really like Tracy McGrady. Uh, if there is a huge Tracy McGrady um, personal collector out there who wants this PMG Red, uh, please reach out to me and let me know. Uh, I'd be happy to discuss it with you. I, I don't mind. I don't PC Tracy. So if somebody out there really, truly wants the card, I'd be happy to discuss uh, terms with you and, and move the card along. Um, but I'd be happy to sit on the extra as well. So no big deal to me. Pop 7, 4 graded higher. Matt Maloney again, PSA 5. <clears throat> Antoine Walker, same 1996 rookie class. Second year, Antoine, PSA 6, uh, pop 3, 6 graded higher. A lot of people don't realize he took the smallest steps of any 6 foot 10 person that ever lived. It would take him like 70 steps. He's like the opposite of Giannis. It would take him like 70 steps uh, at, on a fast break to get from half court to the goal and could not jump to save his life. Uh, but real big body, real crafty. Couldn't necessarily shoot threes proficiently, but sure as hell did take a lot of them. Uh, next is uh, Todd Day on the Celtics. Great college player, it's Todd Day and uh, Lee Mayberry formed a uh, formidable backcourt for Arkansas back in the early to mid 90s. Uh, this is uh, Todd Day is authentic altered here. Nothing special about that card, but that's it, guys. As you can see, they're right there on your screen. 45 of these bad boys just got uploaded. Um, again, PWCC. And uh, PSA did a great job for me getting these cards out and back safely in great condition. Uh, I can't speak highly enough of, uh, of both of those companies. I know there's a lot of uh, bitching and complaining and accusations and horror stories about PSA and PWCC and BGS and Golden and Alt and every other platform in the world. Uh, but I'm just giving you my experience with these two particular companies 
everything went incredibly smoothly. There's no way I could move these cards as quickly and for the dollar value that I'm moving them as I am right now without these high res digital images and being in my vault. Uh, being able to take this information, create spreadsheets, share pictures like seamlessly, uh, like I'm doing with you guys today on this video, you just can't do that when the cards are in hand. And yes, I know people love to have their cards in hand, um, but I'm one of those people who's gotten over it because having them in my vault allows me to transact and move cards and, and, and manipulate and change uh, the direction that my collection's going quicker than if the cards were in hand. So if somebody wants to see, hey, show me all your duplicate PMGs, if I got that message five minutes after this video releases, I literally can go click, check, check, link, message or text or email and they can see every single one front and back with digital images and their pop right there you can't do that if these cards were at my house in baton rouge louisiana inside my gun safe uh which i don't have anything worth any value in there i would literally have to take 90 pictures of front and back there's no way i could do what i do without the pwcc vault and i know there's other vaults out there but I particularly like the PWCC vault. I have no reason uh, to store my cards anywhere else. They've been great to me, and uh, it's been an incredible vehicle that's changed the way that I collect. Again, I don't get paid by PSA. I, in fact, I usually get brutally murdered when I <laughs> submit cards for grades there, and you'll see on my next PSA grade reveal, I got destroyed. Uh, so I don't get paid by PSA. I don't get paid by card ladder. I don't get paid by PWCC. Maybe one day I will, but today is not the day. Uh, I just, when I, I, I stumble onto something that I really like and I'm really confident in, that's really helps me grow my collection, I like to talk about it and share it. Uh, again, no, uh, no company's perfect, but, uh, but I like those three companies amongst many others as well. So uh, anyway, thank you guys for watching. Comment below. Let me know what you think. Um, you know, when I sent these off, I, I didn't think for a second that I would ever sell them until I put the whole set together. And by the time they came back, most of them were already sold, agreed upon in price and everything else. So it was pretty fascinating turn of events, which I'll be able to share uh, details with you more in the, in the not so distant future. So uh, keep watching the channel and hit the bell icon. You'll get notified when I can talk about my big purchase as well as, you know, this is part of a very big sale. So anyway, hope you guys enjoyed that. Lots of red PMGs. If you don't like red PMGs, then you were probably bored off your ass. But uh, anyway, thanks guys for watching. Keep collecting. Stay positive in the hobby. And peace.